So the next thing we're going to be talking about um, is Vesper theory, and this is pretty pretty important stuff to to remember. Um, but what it is is that we have uh, something called geometry and shape. Some molecule has a certain geometry and it has a certain shape to go along with that, but they're not the same. Something could have the same name of a shape as the geometry, but that doesn't mean they're always the same. And we'll see what that means. Uh, so the first thing that we do, um, the first thing is very, very simple. Um, determining the geometry. Nine times out of ten, this is what they're going to be asking for. The molecule's geometry. So be careful if they ask you the geometry or shape because they can be different. Um, and what this means is that you just have, based on the number of groups. So for example, if you have something like this, um, Right, and we're find, trying to find um, the geometry of this molecule, right, um, around this carbon. It has two groups around it, right, so it's linear, right. And now let's look at something like this: three groups around the boron, so it'll be trigonal planar. Uh, four groups around the carbon, tetrahedral. Five is trigonal bipyramidal. Six is octahedral. Um, and one thing to note. Uh, about hybridization, if they ever ask you the hybridization, this is something that it just kind of you just remember it and that's it. Um, linear is sp, trigonal player is sp2, tetrahedral is sp3, um, trigonal bipyramidal is sp3d, sp3d2. Um, and so the only ones they're going to test are these ones up there. Um, they may ask you the geometry of those, but they'll never ask you the hybridization for these last two. But it's not hard to remember, so just kind of be familiar with that. Um, but the thing is this, if we have zero lone pairs, the geometry is the same as the shape. But if we do have a lone pair, so what do I mean by that? For example, um, so we have a lone pair like this versus something um, when we had it like that. These are going to have the same geometry, same geometry, but different shape because one has one lone pair and one has zero lone pairs. All right? And we'll, we'll see how to determine it based on this table right here. Very important for us. Um, so let's see. Um, something that is, has two groups will have a geometry that's linear. All right? Three is trigonal player. And we saw all these rest before, so I'm not going to go too much into that. But like I said before, if it has zero lone pairs, it's going to have the same geometry as the shape. And so um, the, the number of lone pairs will determine the shape. Okay? So say um, something has uh, zero lone pairs, but it also has three groups around it. For example, three groups around it, zero lone pairs. What's the shape? Well, it's trigonal planar. And now if I ask you what's the geometry, well, the geometry is also a trigonal player, okay? So whenever it's zero lone pairs, the shape is the same as the geometry. Um, but now let's think about this. What if we had uh, something that was had four groups around it, but now it had one lone pair? So for example, like what we saw before, right? The geometry is tetrahedral, right? Because the number of groups still is four. But what is the shape? Well, the shape, we know there's one lone pair, so we follow this table. The shape would be trigonal pyramid. Pyramidal is actually what it, they normally refer to it as. Okay? So four groups around it, one, two, three, four, and then one lone pair. will make it have a shape of trigonal pyramidal, but still a geometry of tetrahedral. And now let's look at something like this, um, H2O. Right? H2O, what's its geometry? Well, it still has four groups around it. One, two, three, four. So its geometry is still tetrahedral, right? But how many lone pairs does it have? Well, it has two. One right here, one right there. So it be have a shape that is bent, okay? So the shape is different from the geometry in this case whenever they have lone pairs. So once again, the shape was bent and the geometry was tetrahedral, all right? Um, so another one, let's see, um, maybe let's deal with this. So sulfur, um, let's just say it has six groups around it like that, all fluorines. Um, what would its geometry be? Well, it'd be octahedral. Now what happens, it, what would its shape be? 
Well, it would also be octahedral, okay? But now what if these were gone, and now these became lone pairs? So now it has four groups and two lone pairs. Well, just look at our table. Two lone pairs, square planar. That's all you need to know. You know very, very simple. Um, I left these ones blank, and there's also a column for three lone pairs and uh, four lone pairs as well. But for the MCAT, you don't need to memorize those. That's why I, uh, if there's a line through it, that means they don't exist, right? Because one lone pair with one um, bond would not be anything, um, just like uh, these two as well. But if I left them blank, like in these cases right here with five and six, uh, that's just, I left them blank because you don't need to remember them. It's just one more thing that you don't need to memorize. Um, so just remember, square planar, bent, all right, those are the four that you really need to remember, and of course, all these geometries are extremely important. All right, so now what about the bond angle of these geometries? So the bond angle um, goes like this. So this should be fairly intuitive. So if we had something um, like this, and we're saying that that's linear, right? Um, triple bond, I mean, uh, something that is linear would have to have 180 degrees, right? Um, there's no other way that it would look right, it just wouldn't make any sense. Um, and for um, like this, the bond angle is 120. That should make sense as well because 360 is the whole circle divided by 3, 120. That's how we got that. Um, this is may, may or may not be uh, intuitive or not, but uh, it's 109.5 degrees for a tetrahedral. Um, 109 is good enough, it's, it's close enough to what you need to remember for. Um, but these are all for the geometry, so if you had no lone pairs, those would all be the bond angles. Okay? But if we add a lone pair, so for example, um, say we had, okay, so now this is still tetrahedral geometry, um, but now it's going to be a trigonal pyramidal uh, shape. Okay, So we added a whole lone pair. Right? So what would the, the bond angle be? Well, the bond angle, all you need to know is this. It's less than 109, right? It's just less. That's all that's important. We don't know how much difference. You don't need to memorize that because it will be different for every case. It will always be different because, I mean, some will have a greater uh, repulsion than others. But every lone pair added will decrease the angle because this electron will repulse all these other bond angles, making them go farther down, being repulsed from that lone pair. So it'd be less than 109. And now if we had something like this, what would its bond angle be? Well, since we have even more lone pairs now, it would be even less than um, this molecule right here. So it'd be much less than 109. Not, not too much, but I just, by this I mean, um, this would be less than 109 and this would be even more less than 109. So not, it's not going to be anything like 5 degrees or 50 degrees. It'll still be relatively high, probably around 107, 108, um, and this would be probably 108. Um, but they are still lower, that's all I meant by that. Um, the same goes with trigonal planar. Uh, if, for example, we were to have something like that, it'd be less than 120. Uh, and that's all you need to remember. You don't need to remember exact numbers, you just need to remember trends. That's the most important part for the MCAT. Hey guys, remember to post any questions you would like us to answer in the next question of the day down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.